This is my AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. I have the power color reference model. Right now it'll cost you around 900 to a grand to purchase one of these. And this is my Nvidia GeForce RTX 4090. The going price for 4090s right now is anywhere from 1700 to 2000 and above. So even just looking at prices, you can see that these two cards were not designed to be competitors. However, since they are the flagship GPU models for each company, they tend to get compared to each other very often, and I can understand why. Even I'm curious about it. The big question for me, is the 4090 worth that extra 700 to to $1,000 if I'm going to be playing in 4K? So here's the test config, 7800X3D on X670E Aorus Extreme, 64 gigs of SK Hynix ADI DDR5. For storage, I've got in Aorus 10K Gen 5 M2. And I took each configuration for some runs on factory and streets. First was factory 1080 low, offline, no AI, to set the ceiling for each GPU. And in this test, the... XTX averaged about 11 more FPS than the 4090. The 1% and the CPU FPS per 10 watts were very close and within single digits. So here are the graphics settings I used for this test. And after the factory runs, I took the configs out to streets in offline mode to set a baseline and then in online mode to show real world performance. The streets offline test starts at 2.33. The streets online test in 1080 starts at 358, and the streets online live raids in 4K start at 534. Feel free to skip ahead to see the results and or footage. Basically, when the graphics settings are low and in lower resolutions, the XTX matches and sometimes exceeds the 4090. However, when you crank up the resolution, and put more load on the GPU, the XTX struggles to keep up with the 4090, which is the only card that can run Tarkov in 4K native in high textures with relatively high performance numbers. But is it $1,000 better? For people considering 4090s, it's probably not an issue anyways, but it's good to know the objective differences. I personally believe that gaming hardware is not going to keep getting exponentially stronger I think the direction is going is back towards the middle with things getting more efficient, modular, and handheld. During the pandemic, these companies could pump out any card. Even if it didn't make sense, people will be buying them at double MSRP, even triple sometimes. And this resulted in what was previously considered professional level hardware trickling down into the gaming sphere with the 90 series by NVIDIA. It started with the 3090, which was basically a consumer level Titan. After the boom ended, we saw with the 4000 series by NVIDIA that the cards weren't necessarily more powerful, but they were definitely more efficient. And the same thing with AMD's RX 7000 series GPUs. They didn't necessarily make a huge jump in performance from the last generation. Like if you look at the 6800 XT versus the 7800 XT, sometimes the 68 outperforms the 78, but the 78 just draws way less power. It's way more efficient. And I've kind of seen that across all tech spaces where we're getting these facelifted products like an S version rather than these new generational leaps. Whereas GPUs were the hot thing before, it's just not where it's at anymore, in my opinion. As I used to grab every new GPU that came out, I'm not really interested in grabbing these new ones. What I'm really more interested in seeing is these new APUs, these new handhelds, and whenever AMD decides to release an X3D APU, I think it's game over. It will take a little advancement on power consumption and iGPUs, but personally, I think they've already got that in development or already have it in hand. But who knows, that's just my own hunch. If you just compare the numbers to dollars, the 4090's lead is probably not worth it in a traditional sense, but I don't think that most people looking at a 4090 are looking for the very best value around. They're likely looking for the very best performance around, and the 4090 still holds that crown. 
and since it sits in a class of its own in terms of performance, it commands a price of its own as well. So those are the thoughts that I wanted to share after completing this comparison. There are literally millions of videos on YouTube fighting for those seconds and minutes. So I try to respect your time by keeping my videos to the point and filled with useful information. I hope you found it helpful, informative, or entertaining in some way. I'm incredibly grateful for every view, like, and comment. Every single one is another step toward my dream of creating content full time. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much again, and I hope to see you in the next one.